Welcome back to another episode of Caddy Corner. I'm Caleb. I'm Austin. And today is the day that I get to interview Austin Rayfield. Um, so if you're new here, please be sure to rate and review the show. If you're on audio platforms, if you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, please be sure to like and subscribe and turn the post notifications on so you get a notification every time that we post something new. Um, and also share it around with people if you feel fit to do so. Speaking of something new as well, we have a very special for one year podcast, also a very special for one year surprise post that will be on the on the main Caddy Corner YouTube channel. It will be video only. Uh, there will be sound in the video too, but it will be a video only distribution. So uh, I won't mention what that is yet. Uh, there will be a community post or something, but keep a lookout in your sub box. You're going to love it. Anyways. Yep. Um, so Austin Rayfield, co-host of Caddy Corner Podcast, content creator, Home Depot associate. Yes. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, yeah. So we're doing a little series right now where last week Austin interviewed me, and this week I'm going to interview Austin. So you guys have the privilege of listening to this. So without further ado, if you're ready. I'm ready. Then I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So the first thing that I kind of want to ask you is you like you like do the whole content creator thing trying yeah <laughs> um so I, I where did that like start like where did that birth for you dude that's like literally like the earliest thing that I can remember ever uh wanting to do in my like, whole life um my girlfriend actually asked me a question recently that was not really similar to that but it gets to a kind of a same start point which is like as a kid, did you watch Disney or Nickelodeon? And my answer to that was like, dude, I watched Call of Duty videos as a kid. Like, that's what I did. Um, my entire, like, what I watched mostly from whenever I was a kid until now, all of it is online content that other people make, like real people, not companies, not corporations, not armies of people. You know, it's like pretty lean operations making cool videos that I think is where it all started is just because that's literally what I've watched so much of. Like I was like 2009, like watching call of duty videos yeah. and then it's like 2015 and you're watching the daily vlogs and then it's like 2018 and Mr. Beast comes onto the scene and it's like, I don't know. I've just kind of like watched the whole YouTube thing kind of emerge from like its infancy. You know, people were walking around with like the really chunky rectangular point and shoot cameras of like the, mid to late 2000s and now here we are you know people are shooting on reds and stuff it's crazy yeah i know it is crazy so do you think that like like you get most of your inspiration from youtube yeah, creators all, all all maybe not i mean maybe not all but most yeah um because i i look down at short form vertical in a lot of ways because it's i look at it as more of like a video game instead of like instead of making something a lot of the time. Yeah. Like you, you make a video for the algorithm and you hope it does well. Whereas you do that with a YouTube video, but it's much different. You know, yeah. there, there's some, it depends on who you watch, I guess, but there's some like level of, of creativity that goes into making a video. And I mean, you know that it's like in order to be interesting for six minutes, it's hard. Right. But anybody can be interesting for like 15 seconds, you yeah. know? Um, and so the barrier to, entry I think and then also for the reward because the upside of being able to be really good at making videos on YouTube is a lot higher than on TikTok maybe not from a following perspective but from a financial perspective especially um and so yeah I take a lot of inspiration from people who make YouTube videos because there's really great stuff on YouTube you know like the greatest stuff yeah so you know yeah other than I mean and you have to look at it from a different angle too it's like maybe like a regular YouTube video doesn't look as great as something that's produced on Netflix. But dude, that thing that was produced on Netflix, there's so many people working on that video and that's so many like online content creators. They're just one man, you know, a guy yeah. and an editor, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes there's, it, it's changed some since like the Mr. Beastification of YouTube has taken place, but like it's very lean operations. It's interesting, you know? Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. 
So whenever you, whenever you are like, come up with an idea or or whatever, like you you get inspired, I guess you can say. Like, where does your creative process usually start? Um, it all starts in the script, but really, it all starts in what the heck should a video be made about, and it. I guess the concepts is where it starts. Um, my kind of philosophy is always how can like what message do I want whatever I'm making to like send um whether that's like and and what I mean like message I don't mean like this is what this video is about it's like the way that you send a message is kind of indirectly like you can we can tell you information about how to you know live a better life or whatever through this podcast but the message that we send is all around like building a life that you really like to live um, and so that is really where everything starts. But I, I, every video that I've made in the past year has started with a script in some way. Um, I like narration. I think that it gets the point across and then it lets the B-roll shine. Um, and that's what I like to do. But it all starts with a script. Just was, I just finished a script earlier, like 15 minutes ago. So it all starts with a script. Yeah, that's cool. So after that, then what is the next step usually? Uh, shooting. And shooting is tough because you have to think about so many things, man. <laughs> like, I've always been, especially, like, whenever we were in high school, at least, the way that I thought about it was, like, very linear. I didn't shoot extra footage. Like, we just, like, I have all of the raw footage from the mini golf movie. I would be, I would bet that we used probably 90, Every take. Every take, yeah. Probably 90% of the footage that I'm, was on my yeah, phone is... I'm the exact same way. Yeah. Um... But what I have done, especially since the the TikTok series that I did, uh, my philosophy has changed, which is like just shoot everything because it might be useful. You might need it to fill this gap. You never know um, whenever it comes to like transitions, like how are you going to get from point A to point B? If you don't have enough footage, you can't. Um, so shooting is where it starts. And my kind of thought process with shooting is I break it up into in individual sections and I just try and think about stuff that I absolutely have to get. And then that's... And then you, once you get a camera in your hands and you're playing around, stuff just kind of happens. Um, but you have to go in there with a plan. Otherwise, you'll, like, fumble around and end up doing nothing. Yeah, and I think that that's a good point. Kind of just, like, like shoot everything because all you're doing whenever you're taking a video on your phone is you're, like, building your vault, you know. And, like, that is something that you can go back to any time. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, if you know that you have, like, 50 videos of flowers – and you need a video of a flower, even if you don't need it for that project, it's like you... Just get it. Yeah, you're going to need it later on eventually. Throw it in the archive. I, I was listening to this dude, and he does, like, sound effects. Like, that's, like, his thing. And he has, like, his vault of just, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of sound effects because every time he hears a sound, he will, like, go and record it. And so, like, he just has, like, all these things, whether it's, like, wind blowing or, like, a door closing or, you know, somebody sneezing or right. whatever. You know, he has all these things just because he records everything. Yeah, I, like, love, I love that. It's, it's so sick. Yeah, I took a lot of that idea from, like, I, I grew up in, like, the Casey Neistat era, and he has that. And a, a very key kind of point of his videos a lot of time, it's, it's very obvious when he does it, is – like he lives in New York for 20 years and he shot video the whole time. And so he can go into the archive and pull footage from New York in 2004 and put that into a YouTube video, which is like yeah. the coolest thing ever because like 2004, just having video from that, that's a moment in time that like exists now forever yeah. in the digital world. It's insane. Yeah. I know it's crazy. So with like, with creating and like the projects that you've worked on so far, what do you think is like one of the biggest challenges? The biggest challenge for me is always coming up with an idea that I don't hate after I write the script for it. Um, yeah. Because it, it, you think of these like little tiny ideas, which is kind of what I try and do. Like my kind of goal a lot of the time is to just make a video. It isn't to like come up with an idea and then sit on that idea and then flush that idea fully all the way out. You know, there's projects that I do that for, and there's times and places when there's like these big moments that I like really want to capture that I put a lot of planning, like planning and preparation into videos like that. But when it comes to like regular old like YouTube videos, you just can't 
sit there and hyper fixate on an idea that it, like the idea doesn't have to be perfect. Just make a video. Um, but that's something that I have a hard time with because you have to pick an idea or a concept or whatever that you want to portray. You have to pick something that you're going to want to do the pre-production for and want to shoot. Once you get it into editing, you're already most of the way done. Um, maybe not in, you know, when you look at it from like an hour spent perspective, but like you've already done a lot of work anyways. Yeah. Um, but for me, a lot of the time it's just coming up with an idea that doesn't suck and that I want to talk about, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess like, like whenever it comes to like overcoming that kind of Mm -hmm. thing, like where, where does that happen? Um, I I think for me, at least it's just, I put it on the back burner. I have a lot of scripts that are in my Google Doc that are just there. Yeah, that you just don't use. Mm-hmm, that are just there. I mean, yeah. and maybe one day I revisit them and and figure out how that kind kind of comes to you know a video that I like. Sometimes this happens a ton. Like I'll write a full script that's really good, and then I'm like, what does it look like? All right, no idea. Next, you know, and that's something that's tough too because you spend I don't know a couple hours writing a script, and then all you want to do is go shoot it, but then you don't know how to do that you yeah know? and it's like this is supposed to be the easy part like i've had a camera for I've, we've been working with cameras and stuff for a couple of years this should be the easy part but it's like it's tough because you have to nail it you know um the angle that i always take when it comes to like coming up with ideas is i just like to spread information like the podcast is is the just bare bones i guess way of spreading information you just talk into a microphone that's kind of it but whenever you make a video with the intention of spreading information or or just sharing anything you have to also think about what it looks like and be like very intentional about that. And so that that I think is hard um, because I can't draw. So a storyboard is kind of out of the out of the equation. You know, like it's just a YouTube video, so it helps to just kind of start. But it's like, where do you start? Um, overcoming it is just like start, <laughs> try. Yeah. Um, just try everything. Yeah. But then a lot of the times too, like I will just put ideas on the back burner and be like, I'll come back to this some other time and I'll come up with another idea to kind of go after and. That happens all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. So whenever it comes to, like, content and, like, the success of content, how do you, like, measure success? Um, Do I feel like I did the job that the video was intended to do? Like, did I spread the right information? Did I did I paint myself in a, pot, in a light that matches the way that I try and present myself online and also in real life? Um. I, there's different ways of kind of looking at it, but like the way that I look at it from the way that I want to be perceived is I just like to be like very authentic and very like myself. Um, I don't like to kind of put on a facade that's a waste of time. Um, and you can only do that for so long. And so I don't try and do that. Um, and so if there's ever moments where like I write a script for every video, I don't read off of the script for every video, but there's a script there. And so if there's parts of the video that I, I like you can tell that I'm reading off of a script. I'll do it again and not look at the script so that that way it still feels like it's me, not Real a life. machine. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I just don't like the idea of not being myself uh, really in any context, but especially in video because I can go back and I can do it again. And so it makes sense to do that if I'm not being painted in the light that I want to be painted in. Um, but, you know, really – and it comes from the podcast a lot, but it comes from other mediums too, is it's just like positive, positive feedback or like good critiques. Like everything that I make is with the intention of just getting more reps, you know, like even with the podcast, like, of course we post this with like with the intention of growing, but we do it every week to get a little bit better at creating content and understanding the distribution process and things of that nature. So yeah, like the measurement of success for me, I guess is improvement in myself as a creator and then also like pushing forward the personal brand that I'm like trying to build. Yeah, I dig that. So with that in mind, what do you think is your like most successful project based off like that metric? Um, so that's a really good question actually, because I'm not like a hundred percent sure. Um, I think I would be lying if I said that the podcast is not the perfect manifestation of exactly what I just said. Like, yeah. We've gotten better every week. I believe that the podcast as, especially as a collaborative effort, um, because naturally I'm not a partner guy. Like I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. Naturally. I like to work on things alone, 
but this has been something that I think about all the time. And it's like, dude, if I was trying to do this by myself, it would suck. You know, like the production side, the distribution side, coming up with new ideas. What the heck's the next episode going to be about? You know, blah, 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 blah. That would be brutal. And I assume that you would feel similar, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, And so that is something that I also look at. It's a huge win because like working with a partner, in this case, you makes it more fun and easier. And it also takes some of the burden off of my back, but it also kind of doesn't because like there's two of us. So we want to like double speed, like grow it or whatever. But also like I come on the podcast, I talk into this microphone and I'm myself in both shows. Like I'm more serious and more like particular. And I focus on like articulating myself right and spreading a good message on the main show. And then we go into after hours and we just kind of talk about whatever we want to talk about for however long we want to talk about it. So yeah, um, the podcast does it. I think it's the element of, you know, like my brand that exists right now. It's the best kind of manifestation of the things that I care about. Yeah. All right. So the last kind of thing that I kind of want to get into, uh, is like, if somebody came up to you and they were like, where do I start? whenever it comes to like content creation, Mm -hmm. like help me, you know? Yeah. What, what? Okay. So the first thing that I would tell you to do is figure out what the heck you want to make. Um, which is hard. It's probably the hardest thing. Um, but you can easily, I think without doing any research, figure out like the medium that you want to start with. Maybe photos seems very appealing to you. That's great. We have a starting place now, you know? And then the next thing that I would tell you to do is to go and then do some research into what does, like what is possible within the world of photography because you have so much, so many, you have, you can do landscapes, you can do portraits, you could do long exposure at night, you could do like cool, creative, crazy shots where you focus on like the, like getting a crazy cool camera angle or you could be like a backpacking explorer type vibe and you get to like the top of this cool hill and boom, there's like the crazy landscape or whatever. There's so many different elements of creating in, in every regard, but like for, it's just literally figure out the pro a project that you would want to do and then see who else has done that project and learn kind of from that it, in the same way that like, if you want to learn how to hit home runs, you're going to look, you're not going to go and look at baseball players that are like your middle infielders who are, you know, hitting singles and doubles and stealing bags. You know, it you have to, look in the right places to get the information that you need, you know, and then, and then be willing to learn because like the initial kind of steps of like, like I've never made a video before. What do I do? Well, you're going to have to come up with a plan. You're going to have to shoot that video. You're going to have to edit that video. And then you're going to have to share that video across however many platforms you want to share it across. It's a lot. Um, but you're going to have to learn those things if you want to make a video and you want people to see it, you know? So, yeah. And I think like, like kind of to like you said coming up with what you want to make is definitely the hardest thing but I think like in today's world where we have access to everything and then if you are like young or whatever and have the time then it's like you can literally try everything and so I think that like being able to go on my phone and literally make whatever I want to make ever in the whole universe like is is a crazy thought but it's like that's what we have access to and I think like that is a hard thing to do like to pick what you like to do the most but it's not hard to like try no everything and that's the thing is like if you never try you're never gonna know yeah if you never try you know whatever content creation medium that you want to do it's like you're never gonna know and and I think like too the the content creation means that are like the most popular like TikToks or whatever like short form is the most popular type but I think that I think that it's hard to enjoy that kind of oh I agree but I also think that I grew up in the long form make a YouTube video tell a story that is how I know how to make a video and so when it comes to tell a funny joke in in 12 seconds or spread some information in like 30 seconds, that is very hard for me because I don't know how to start. And I don't know how to end. The middle part is easy, right? It's easy to like just talk into a camera. You know what I mean? But it's like, how do I make somebody care that I'm going to talk into a camera mm-hmm. in like two seconds? 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the crazy part. It's yeah. like a very backwards way of making a video for me and my brain. And I think that a lot of people that are our age think the same type of way yeah. as that. And I think that if they're new into content creation and they want to like fit in with a the crowd, then they're going to go to TikTok and then it'll kind of like turn them off to yeah. the world of creating because like that's not the only way to make a video, mm -hmm. you know? Not it, close. It, it, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that... I don't really know where I'm trying to go with that, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of like it's I, like, I think that it's exactly what you're saying. And I think that the biggest thing for me with TikTok is what I am interested in making videos about is not really something that TikTok really rewards. Like I'm not this like naturally like funny guy that can like come up with these good comedic ideas that, that works well. And that's like one of the, probably the most popular things for TikTok is like, funny videos it's like, yeah that's not what i can kind of come up with and then whenever you think of the like mega viral videos like the first one that i always think of is do you remember that guy that would dance on the hill with the drone going around him like that's a great idea but you can never do that again he's the drone guy you know yeah and so now that idea is kind of gone and i don't my brain doesn't really work that way either my brain doesn't work in the what is a one stunt that i can do that people are going to care about one time you know it's not how my brain works either um and so yeah, TikTok's not the only way to make videos, but if you're somebody who can come up with these like really good stuff, or if you're really good at something very specific, TikTok is great for that too. Like yeah. if you are insane at making cheeseburgers, then what are you doing not making TikToks? Yeah, that's you know? true. If you're insane at like at like soccer, but with like flippers on instead of cleats, then what are you doing not on TikTok? You know what I'm saying? I do. Um, and so, but I I don't look at myself really like that. Where I don't have this like stand out like skill set that's like flashy and gets quick bang bang views you know what i mean that's not yeah. how i look at at myself at least you know yeah it's really interesting it is it's really interesting yeah so what do you think is like like the most pivotal moment in like your career so far um that's a good question probably Probably the the broadcasting, to be honest, because originally, like whenever people would ask me what I wanted to do as a job, I would have said exactly that, which is hilarious. Um, kind of looking back at it, because like as a like in high school, I like cared a lot about sports. That was like the content that I consumed a lot was like podcasts talking about the NBA and stuff like that. Um, and so then like you get to where we were at with the live commentating of the athletic events and that was kind of like a full circle moment. And then it was like, man, this is not really what I want to do for a job at all. Uh, not that it wasn't an enjoyable experience. It was awesome, but I'm more interested in like making videos that are, I don't know, have some like, cause I like the, I like the creative process. I'm less interested in showing up and putting headphones on and seeing what happens. I'm more interested in like coming up with a good yeah, idea, creating what happens, yeah, creating what happens. Exactly. And yeah. like telling a story and like figuring out, figuring out how it's shot. Like that's not stuff that we really ever got to worry about in, in that specific kind of case. But it was something that I was very interested in like live production before. And I'm less so now. And I think that, that was a very pivotal moment, like I said, because we talked about this a lot. Is like, I think you learn just as much from, like, doing something and learning that you hate it as doing something and learning that you like love it. Which, if I, not more, yeah, definitely more. And that I'm not saying that I hated the the broadcasting because it's not true. Like that was a, that was an awesome time, you know. But I learned that that's not something that I would want to do as a career, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the same way that, like, if you're in, like, the high school chess club, you probably don't want to do chess for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Uh, but as long as you learn that, then that's great, you know. Uh, yeah. And so I think that was very pivotal because now instead of – and I even did um, some live production for sport events at Catawba whenever I was a freshman. I was like, this is just not what I want to do. I don't really want to, like, run a computer in the background for – it's not what I'm interested in. Like I'm more interested in running comp running a computer in the background of like a movie or like a short film or like a documentary or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I think I think like kind of what you what you just said that that is 
more important than figuring out that you love something is figuring that figuring out that you hate something because there are there are more things in the world that you're not going to do than things that you do actually do and so being able to c- cipher through all the things and figure out and eh, I don't like this and eh, I don't like this and eh, I don't like this mm-hmm. you know I think like looking at it not liking something is kind of like a negative thing but it's really a positive thing because now it's like okay I don't have to waste the time or the money on that anymore and now I can put my focus on this and figure out if I like this now because this thing could be something that you really love that you could actually do for the rest of your life and if you spent more time doing this thing that you just like didn't like but you know were so invested or or it was the popular thing to do or whatever then it's like now all the time that I could have spent over here I was too worried about you know being the cool guy over in this group you know I think that like where that comes from is like knowing in some way like what direction that you need to go in you know what I mean like I, I knew like my whole life I knew that in some way like digital media and like content creation or like production probably would be like the umbrella of things that like I knew that I kind of wanted to be in like I've known that since I was a kid but I didn't know what that meant whenever I was like nine you know but then like you get to do you get to have some experiences like you make some videos you make some videos in this style and decide that you don't like that and you pivot like having those experiences and really I guess like opportunities to just try different styles of like creating content or you know whatever and learning kind of what I do and don't like has like it's like ping pong me back and forth back and forth but like it gets narrower and narrower and I kind of like you know you kind of find your path but people will get you're right people will get stuck doing things that they don't like to do or um never figuring out or figuring out too late um things that they do like to do because they're too focused on like other people's thoughts or like what it makes their like social like clout worth or whatever uh which is a bunch of mumbo jumbo but where that comes from is like being lost in some way like of a path for yourself you know yeah so whenever whenever you were a kid and like before you knew anything about like making anything like before you knew anything about video photo anything production wise like what kind of like drew you to the industry because like for me it was like I would go to like a concert or like I remember one that I really remember is like going to the circus and like watching all the people run from like the tunnels into the ring Mm -hmm. you know and then like after they would get done they would go like back into the tunnels and I was like dude like I want to be the person who like opens the curtain so that they can like run out just so I can like be back there and like be a part of that and like see what's going on like behind the scenes that's like kind of where my brain always went as a kid and so I didn't know if you had something like similar to that yes so um like as a kid I would uh, literally until like freshman ish year of high school all I wanted to do like was make gaming videos. That was it. Like I grew up in like the peak of Call of Duty and that's what I loved. Like that was my life. Like I like I don't know if you know like but like the Modern Warfare 2 lobby, like I was there and it was like people dropping like crazy stuff like in party chat, like slurs that you cannot say anymore. Um like I was there for that. Like I was there for like Black Ops 2 and the same thing like like I was, I was there for that. And I was like a member of that like community, and like I watched creators do that. Like I watched people drop like big kill games and whatever. Like that was all I wanted to do. And actually, like in eighth grade, like I did, I did that. The first video. This is funny. You're gonna laugh at this. The first video that I ever edited in my life was on a PlayStation Four on the built-in editing software on a PlayStation Four. And like that was the first. Like those videos are gone now. I have no idea where those videos live now. But like. That was the first the first content that I ever made in my life, and the first time I ever edited a video was with a PlayStation 4 controller. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and so that is kind of like my first kind of taste and like look into, you know, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to play video games, you know? But what I learned from that was all I wanted to do was, because in video games is like a very polarizing example of this, which is like, you know, I get to play video games and that's my job, but, and I used to say the same thing, but what I, what I really meant was like I want to do something that I love to do and I want to make that into a career, you know, yeah. talking into a microphone, you know, like shooting a video. Like that was what I meant as like a 14-year-old kid. 
Uh, but I didn't know that then. But I right. do now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, that's like all I have. Money. Dude, that was uh, that was sick. Yeah. Did you have a good time? I did. I didn't like stump you at all. No. I'm I I'm good on the I'm good on my feet, I think. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um but yeah, thank you. Thank you everybody for listening. Um hopefully you enjoyed this um interview style series, I guess. It's fun to do. Um yeah. Like Austin said at the beginning of the show, we have a very special episode next week coming out for you guys for the one year special of Caddy Corner. Also, Whoop whoop! One yeah. year of Caddy Corner is next week. That's crazy. We'll probably talk about that episode fifty three. Yeah, uh, like in a more. The next video is an interview video, um, for you guys too, similar to this except for different. Uh, given the fact that there's a a new person added to the uh to the roster, but, um, yeah, exactly like you said. We'll we'll probably get all sentimental on episode fifty three, but not next week. Yep. Um. So, thank you again for tuning in. Be sure to rate and review the show. Um, like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Do all the things that you already know how to do. Um, be sure to tune in the uh, next week because it's going to be crazy. Yeah, super um, special um, surprise thing that you probably never thought that you would see on the Caddy Corner channel coming. I don't actually know when, um, but soon, sooner than later. And it will be limited time, and you guys will hear about that sometime. So. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. So with that all said, I'm Caleb. I'm Austin. And we will see y'all next week. Peace. Peace.